photosynthetic microorganisms. They are responsible for producing 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. There are 10 times more microorganisms in our body than their number of cells. Knowing them, how they behave and how they misbehave can influence human health, can influence our environment and overall ecology and ecosystem that's around us. My name is Anupam Sengupta. I am an FNR Attract Fellow and Assistant Professor of Biophysics at the University of Luxembourg. In my lab, we combine materials physics, fluid mechanics and microbiology to understand how living systems adapt to changes in their environment. Our approach is to develop the biophysical principles of how microorganisms respond and interact with their environment. This is a question which is particularly relevant in today's world of changing climatic patterns. In today's world, as our health and diet and sleep patterns, everything is going a makeover due to our lifestyle. The microorganisms are also facing the impact of that. I was born in Calcutta and then did my studies at the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai. And you know, if you are from a middle class family in India, I think the safest uh, low risk option to a good life is to study hard. I was never intending to get into a career in academia. After I finished my studies of mechanical engineering, I received an offer from the startup from the University of Erlangen. And uh, after working for a year in the company, I think I was missing some challenge and made a switch from engineering to physics and joined the Max Planck Institute in Göttingen in Germany. I started to look into a completely different system, namely liquid crystals, and I applied for a very unique uh, fellowship. Uh, it's called the Human Frontiers Fellowship, and this took me to MIT and to ETH Zurich. And that's when I got exposed to how fundamental phase of matter could play a role in a lot of biological processes. We look at aquatic and marine ecosystems and one of our research activity involves studying algae uh, response to turbulence. When we study these organisms, we try to study them in a microenvironment that is most representative of what is happening out there in nature. So this is where we put in our microorganisms to do real-time or time-lapse imaging. So what you can do is you can essentially program this device to execute motions of turbulence or shear flows what is out in natural ecosystems. So now when you combine this automated device with this real-time imaging system, what you are essentially getting is information of how do these microorganisms behave when they face such hydrodynamic environment which resembles natural ecosystems. Another uh, set of organisms that we study are the gut microbiome. So there has been a number of recent studies, including some pioneering work from here in Luxembourg, which has showcased how our dietary habits can change the local structural properties of the mucus layer, which makes a barrier between the epithelial cells and the microbiome, which is uh, present in this gut environment. We are trying to develop a systematic microfluidic platform where we can very precisely tune the viscosity and the structural properties of mucus layers and then studying how bacterial colonies attach to these mucus layers. What we are doing over here is taking a time-lapse movie of bacteria growing over a time scale of 18 to 20 hours when we start to fluctuate the environment. For example, it could be fluctuation in the nutrient levels or fluctuation in the temperature that would give rise to different patterns. And by comparing these, we can then start to look at the impact of the environmental factors on these growing bacterial colonies. The second part is going beyond, say, the physicist's approach, but to also tie it up 
with how our biology colleagues do it, studying the molecular responses of these organisms under similar settings. Right now we are tackling uh, one species at a time. However, in future the plan is to build up a community, kind of a network or an interaction. We hope to also build up computer simulations using principles or techniques from uh, deep learning and artificial intelligence where we can extrapolate these results to other organisms. Luxembourg, it's one of the youngest universities in Europe, if not in the world. And that has led to a very dynamic interaction between young faculties like myself, but also more experienced faculties who have chosen to be in Luxembourg. This is one thing that we benefit a lot from. Um, we have very active collaborations with uh, the Luxembourg Center for Systems Biomedicine. We also have a small lab that's embedded in the LCSB where we are focusing more on the molecular part of our work. The second thing is, since the university is still going through these early phases, uh, what it does is if you have a good idea, you get heard and you, you get complimented for your ideas or the fresh thoughts that you bring in. Living matter poses one of the most exciting challenges in science that we have today. And every day that we see a new phenomena or, or just a glimpse of a potential new phenomena, there is no greater reward than to keep pursuing towards discovering what is the physics which is driving this phenomenon?